knowledge, al-ilm al-nafi', beneficial knowledge, is that which reflects on who you are. Now, let me tell you a few things about God and you tell me if this is true. Do you accept that God has no beginning and end? Good. Do you believe God is the all-knowing? The all-powerful? Can God die? But I'm assuming you're going to ask me that's how, God, how Jesus doesn't know the day or the hour. Yeah, so the reason I'm saying that is you don't believe God can die. You don't believe God can lie? No. Good. So we say there are certain things that we know about God, who he is. Yeah. Good. So what we say is the following, the reason why we do not believe Jesus is God is like you said before, is that he was a human being like me. He ate food. Mm -hmm. Now we believe that God doesn't require food to eat. Mm -hmm. We believe God doesn't need to sleep. Mm -hmm. We believe that God is the one and only majestic. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why we say Jesus cannot be God. I've had to be Jesus is God to you too, but... Um, is it because you've been told? No, or is it because you believe? Cause I, I, I generally do believe, but a lot of my faith just comes from my father Okay, good. Now, let me tell you a few things about God and you tell me if this is true. Do you accept that God has no beginning and end? Good. Do you believe God is the all-knowing? The all-powerful? Can God die? But I'm assuming you're going to ask me that's how, God, how Jesus doesn't know the day or the hour. Yeah, so the reason I'm saying that is you don't believe God can die. You don't believe God can lie? Good. So we say there are certain things that we know about God, who he is. Yeah. Good. So what we say is the following. The reason why we do not believe Jesus is God is, like you said before, is that he was a human being like me. Mm -hmm. He ate food. Mm -hmm. Now, we believe that God doesn't require food to eat. Mm -hmm. We believe God doesn't need to sleep. Mm -hmm. We believe that God is the one and only majestic. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why we say Jesus cannot be God. I've had to be Jesus is God to you too, but... Um, is it because you've been told? No, or is it because you believe? Because I, I, I generally do believe, but a lot of my faith just comes from my father because obviously he's an Orthodox Christian. Okay, good. But um, no, because he says that I'm I, I'm not too sure in the verses, but I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Right. Nobody comes yeah. to the father. Yeah. Nobody. Okay, he doesn't say I'm the Alpha and Omega, but the point is this, sister. If we took Islam, well, let's take all religions out of it. No Islam, no Christianity. We don't know any religions. And me and you, we're like okay. Let's suppose we just popped up in an island. Yeah. Me and you. And I'm like, sister, I believe there's a power behind all of this. We're an island, we're looking around trees, the sea. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? There's something bigger yeah, than us. Be Good. So don't forget, no Christianity, no Islam. We don't know nothing about them. If I said to you, okay, you know what? Do you think it's rational, sister, that we believe that there's a God? Imagine if I was like, if I, imagine we're on this island. We're not exposed to any religion. You would, would you not believe in God? Like imagine if we said, you know what, look, there's trees are here, we're, there's, there's sea, yeah, there's wood. We believe in God. Yeah, okay, creator. good. So if I came and said to you, okay, we believe in, there has to be some kind of God. He must have put us here for a reason. So he must give us a purpose. Okay, good. He must be the all-knowing. If I said to you, mm, I think this God is a monkey. Would you be like, there you go, your facial expression. Okay, if I said, mm, no, this God has to be a man like me. Would you, would you be like... Well, I think the, the reason I believe it's Trinity is because... Uh, not Trinity, not Trinity. No? Let's, let's, let's pretend there is no Trinity, there is no Islam. You just on the island. Yeah, God, would, how God can't be in that. Good. Would you ever accept my premise that God is a human being? Would that, if I said to you, I think God exists, he's all powerful, and I think he's a man like me. No, I wouldn't. Be. Good. Do you know what we call that in Islam? Now coming back to Islam. It's called the fitrah. Which means, do you know we say every person is born a Muslim? It's because if we take all religions aside, me and you would believe that God is one, He's the all-powerful, He's the all-knowing, and we will never ever say He is a man. It's external yeah. information that makes us say that. No, I understand. Yeah. But um, I just, the things like, um, because it says in the Bible, like, yeah. no one comes through the Father but through me. And yes, how, we accept that. But you believe in textbook corruption of the Bible, don't you? We, we do, but not us. The Christian scholarship says that. So if you reopen your Bible, and if you go to certain verses, it will tell you, these verses do not belong in the earliest manuscripts. So it's not us that says it, the Christian scholars tell that the Bible has been corrupted. This is the reason why the Quran was sent down. And I'll ask you a question. If God Almighty sent down a scripture, and that scripture got corrupted, 
and he's, imagine he sends a prophet, he sends a scripture to a nation, and that gets corrupted. What will be the logical, rational thing to do? What do you think God would do after? Imagine. I repeat again. He sends a prophet with a book, and the book gets corrupted. What do you think logically and rationally God will do next? Two. Rectify that. What would he do? Think about it. So there's a book that's been corrupted. Would he not send another prophet with another book? Yeah. But do you not believe that, yeah. the, that the Bible, uh, no, not the corrupt version? Injil. We believe the original in Injil. Yeah. Yes, but we don't believe the Bible is the Injil. So we say the Injil yeah. was sent by God Almighty to Jesus. But the Bible that you have is not the Injil. Because of the, because of the corruption, the people read Mark, Matthew, Luke, John. Who are these people? Who wrote it? The, the Bible. The, sorry, sorry. No, no, no that's the, fine. They, 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 they were disciples, exactly. But we don't know anything about them. But, we, but they walked with Jesus. No, no. no but no, the, no. the thing is, if you do a bit of research, none of them did. How do you know? They, they were if you do some research, like for example, if you read New John's commentary of the Bible, he doesn't. He says we don't know who John is. Is it John the Presbyter, John the son of Zebedee, or John the Apostle? We don't know who these individuals were. They were. They claim. They say according to look. It says according to Matthew. According to so Luke. Then they're all lying. Not liars. We don't know who they are. They never met Jesus. They never spoke with Jesus. But they, but they wrote down the miracles that he did in the book. That's the thing. How could you write something that you was never a witness of? This is why we see this corruption. Exactly. So what we're seeing is, imagine I give a testimony, and I'm like, this accident happened. And you're like, okay, Ali, when did you see this? I'm like, I didn't see it. I, somebody told me. So you're not a first eyewitness. You're, I'm like, no. According to you, imagine me saying according to, I'm talking about, but you're like, but then why is she not here? The thing is, these things have not been reliable. That's the reason why, is sister. Is that not like saying how, how in the Quran it, yeah. it denies that Jesus is God? Is yeah. that like not saying, well, if the Quran came 600 years after Jesus, then yeah. why should I believe what's in the Quran? Over okay. Then Good. Believe? Perfect. That's so what we say is the following, sister. So we say that the Old Testament, the New Testament came hundreds, if not thousands years later. Do you get it? Yeah. So, so then if I use that argument, then I would say the Jews had the Old Testament thousands of years before the New Testament came. So why would the Jews follow the New Testament then? According to that logic. Because if you're saying the, the Quran came 600 years later, yeah. why would I trust it? Yeah, no, then no. the argument will be used with Judaism when they will say, well, Christianity and the New Testament came hundreds and thousands of years don't, later. They don't, sorry, they don't believe it. Exactly. Guess what? The Jews believe what we believe closer. When it comes to God Almighty, they say the same thing. So imagine they believe that God is not but a man. They not believe that Messiah is going to come and that he's going to yes. be a man who's born of a virgin. Like yeah, how you believe. Exactly. They deny it. So check this out. We as Muslims, we believe Jesus' miraculous birth, his mother, the miracles he done, and we believe he's the Messiah and he's going to come back. The Jews insult him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we as Muslims, we're saying we're the middle path, which is what? The Jews degrade him. The Christians yeah. excel, excel him to a level of being God. The Muslims come and say, can we meet in the middle and say, yeah, we don't I insult him. Exactly. He was a mighty prophet. So the difference between us and the Jews is we don't insult Jesus and no Muslim can be a Muslim if you don't believe in Jesus. The difference between us and the Christians is we're saying, don't give the credit that belongs to God to Jesus. And I'll give you an example. You have a father, you said, yeah? You have a mother. Good. Imagine your mom and dad brought you to this age. How old are you? You're 16. Imagine you turn around and say, Mom, Dad, you've done eff all for me. Imagine. You've done nothing for me. I'm going to go and thank Ali. How would they feel? Ashamed. Ashamed. Betrayed. They'll say, so what an ungrateful girl. Good. Now, what do you think the Christians are doing when instead of giving the credit that belongs to God, you go and say, Jesus, thank you. Instead of saying, thank you, God, the one who created Jesus, you are giving the credit to Jesus. And guess what? Good. But what did Jesus say? Jesus always bigged up who? The Father. He said, I and myself can do nothing. As I seek, as I see, I judge. And my judgment is just for I don't seek my will but the will of my Father. Why is he keep referring to the Father? If they were equal, why would he give credit to something else, someone else? So if, if, for example, me and you were equal, yeah? And somebody came and gave me and said, you know what, Ali, you're an amazing artist. And I go, well, don't say thank you to me. I've learned it from her. That means you are superior. I've learned it from you, correct? So then why is Jesus saying, my father, when they came and said, oh, good masters, why don't call me good? There is only one good. That's God alone. When he went to the mountain of Gethsemane and prayed like we Muslims pray. We pray as we Good. So who is he praying to if he's God? I thought he is the he is the father. 
Good. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so what I'm saying, my dear sister, is in a nutshell, obviously I don't want to hold you too much, your friends are here. You guys need to go, I don't want to hold you too much, my dear sister. What I'm saying is the following. If we put all religions aside, you, you know what called the fitrah, you will believe that God is one and he's not a man. Yeah, no, I completely understand that. Exactly. But I, th I think as well, just, I think as well, Muhammad, like, because in the Quran, it also says that Jesus was sinless, correct? Jesus was what? Sinless? Yeah, yeah, we believe all prophets are sinless. I thought, what, Muhammad was sinless? No, the same. But Prophet Muhammad, when it comes to, for example, humanly things that he did, he made mistakes. But in general, we believe all prophets, they cannot commit major sins. All of them. There's no discrimination with one or the other. Are you I'm Sunni. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But what I don't understand as well yeah. is how, and no disrespect, no disrespect, no, no, please. how, um, how if, if God was born yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, then why would he let Muhammad marry six years? Okay, good question. Know, now, yeah. I, I can understand that in the time it was different. Yeah. And, and, and that, but I just, I don't see how yeah. a 56 year old man yes. and Six-year-old. Well, uh, when she contemplated marriage, when she was yeah, nine, nine years old. Yeah. Yes. I don't believe. I don't get how an all-knowing God would let a, a man okay. of that age. Perfect. When we know now scientifically yeah. that a nine-year-old girl and yeah. a six-year-old man would yeah. clearly hurt the young girl. She's not as okay. Well so what we do is, sister, with this instance, what happens is we look at the situation with our what's coming on now. So we look at a nine-year-old now and go, oh my gosh. But what we're saying is that we're talking about 1400 years ago. In this country, about 100 years ago, if you read William Blackstone's book on British common law, girls were betrothed at the age of seven. In this, I never said it does. I'm, I'm not saying it does. I'm just trying to prove a point that this happened 100 years ago, let alone 1400 years ago. Now, what we're saying is the following. We believe that, for example, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we look at his character. We look at who he was. Because when an accusation is asper uh, an aspersion, for example, about your father, if somebody comes and says something about your father, you will hold them and say, I know my dad. And I, I, I don't, what you're accusing of him cannot be true. So you don't believe him like No, 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 we do. What we're seeing is this aspersion that he was a paedophilic person is not true. But is because someone who's overrated by a young child? No, because, but, no, no, no. Because what that means, paedophilic is someone who has attraction to minors. So what we're seeing is the Prophet Muhammad, his first wife, was 25 years older than him. So if somebody has this perversion, why at the age of 25, he was married to someone who was 15 years older than him and he stayed married to her for 25 years. The question is this, if he had those inclinations and he was a prophet or whatever, he could have easily go and marry multiple six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds. We say, number one, we look at his character. The fact that he was married to one woman who was 15 years older than him in his prime when he was 25. Then when she died, he married, he married Aisha. But just bear in mind, the, the, the marriage contract was done at the age of six when she became an adult, Mikha. Now, when I say she became an adult, to you, a nine-year-old, not just puberty, there has to be no harm. Because in this country, it says 16 is the legal age. However, a 16-year-old girl could not be ready. It could harm her. So Islam doesn't put one shoe on all. It says that each girl, it depends on her age, right? So it doesn't say, oh, you're 16 now, you can go and have intimacy. No, it might not. you might not be mentally, sexually and physically ready. Okay, what we're saying is, if she wasn't, for example, at the age of nine, bear in mind, this is 1400 years ago, 1400 years ago. So we're saying, girls back then and the lifespan back then is totally different. Now, one thing that I'll tell you the following. Can you ever lie about love? Like, for example, if you, I don't know, have you ever been in love? Okay. When somebody's in love, you cannot lie about love. You can lie about a lot of stuff, but you cannot fake love. Now, we look at the Prophet's marriage to Aisha, and we look at the dynamics it was. If she was coerced, if she didn't want to be in that marriage, there were certain things that she would have shown that would have been like, hold on a second, this doesn't make sense. Number one, she was perpetually jealous. So anytime the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, argument's sake, there was a attractive woman next to him, she would have this extreme jealousy. So much so, once she smashed, she made food for the Prophet and she smashed the plate. Why? Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, obviously he was married, we believe in polygamy in Islam. He brought, he didn't know. He, he had some food that was made from his other wife. Now, Aisha broke the plate. The question I'm asking is the following, sister. If there was coercion, if this was something abnormal, why didn't his enemies use it against him and say, hold on a second, you say you're a prophet of God, why are you marrying a nine-year-old? Because she was an adult then. You need to understand, for example, you're 16, yeah? Have you heard um, Akon, Akon, did you see the Akon? Akon, rapper. 
You have to remember Akon. Sorry, it's a different generation. Okay. <laughs> Akon, Akon, a different generation. Akon had a track. It was called, it was called Put the Blame on Me. Why? Because he went to a club. There was a, I think, an 11 or 12 year old girl that was fully matured. Yeah, no, I understand. So, what, I, what I'm saying is, you can't take a nine year old today and a nine year old back then and equate them because the whole dynamic, the climate, and the time was totally different. They, they, see, this is what I'm saying. You cannot take, look, let me tell you something. You can go to America and you can see 12 year old girls. They are so yeah, developed, yeah, yeah, no, I, you will think this girl is 24 years old. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm saying is the following, that we look at the Prophet's character, we look at his dynamics with Aisha, how could Aisha be coerced and be so jealous of the Prophet? Why did she have that romantic relationship with him? Like she was jealous, they raced together, they, the Prophet peace be upon him, and they would drink from the same cup. She never once ever contested. But could that just be because she's a young girl, you know what I mean? Like it can be like anything in any relationship. So yeah. People can go by whatever they say. You really have to love someone. To, 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 okay, look. There is, we have, for example, in our Islamic hadith literature, narrations, there are so many things that Aisha talks about. Yeah. She talks about, for example, when she got angry and she smashed the plate. She talks about so many things that happened between them, between the Prophet. She does not once ever mention that I never wanted to marry him. And not only that, when he died, she could have easily gone and get married again. The thing is this, just because we... Sorry? She stayed a widow. Yeah, she stayed a widow. Not only that, she, she is one of the biggest scholars in Islam. Because of her young age, you know Hadith literature, we learn it from her. Because she was so young in age. But what I'm saying is the following. We say the Prophet waited. Don't forget, when was the marriage made? At the age of six. When was the marriage consummated? At the age of nine. If the Prophet Muhammad had that inclination, why did he wait three years? For what? To, for her to become an adult. He waited, because otherwise, if he had that inclination, an individual who has pedophilic inclinations, he doesn't say, oh, how old are you, six? I'm going to come back when you're nine. Oh, how old are you, seven? I'm going to come back when you're ten. Why did he wait three years for her to mature and become an adult? That, that, that's, that's what we expect. And, and there is nothing... I completely understand yeah. your point. Yeah, yeah. But and I think, it, yeah. especially now, like, morally... Up, if, if, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking, oh, had Islamically. So what does Islam say about today? Like, is that, like, basically, does that apply? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay, let me make it simple. Nowhere in our religion system does it say that we have to marry a six-year-old or a nine-year-old. We use that model. Let me tell you how. But you shouldn't condemn that as your prophet. No, no, no. We don't condemn it. We, we condone it. How? Let me explain. For example, the prophet marriage did the contract at six. He married at nine. Okay, good. So if I have a son... Didn't they do... Um, I'm sorry. I'm not no, sure fine, what it is. But I don't know what it is in Arabic, but sighing, where instead of... Say that again? Sighing, instead of... What's that? Having sex with her, he was between her thighs, so then it No, no, I, 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 I never heard it. No, I've never heard of that. So, yeah, so the thing is this, we say in Islam that, for example, um, if she's the age of, for example, if my son, if my son is 17 years old and he meets a girl who's 15, what's the legal age in this country? Good. I will look at the Prophet's example, the fact that he waited for Aisha to become an adult, I will tell my son, we follow the same example, you have to wait for her to become 16. So we use the same model. Nowhere in Islam does it say you, you have to... married her at the age of six, so is that not child marriage? Even if it's... No, because we say she become an adult at the age of nine. No, so... at the age of six when they got married? No, no, no. Ma okay, so, so he in, in, in convention, convention in the UK, when we talk about marriage, it means sex. Well, actually people have sex before marriage. Okay, in Islam it's different. Having a marital contract and consummating marriage is different. So a contract can be made between two individuals, and then two years later that individual can say, I changed my mind and that marriage is broken. The consummation happens when she becomes an adult. Do you get it? That's why the Prophet waited for her to become an adult at the age of nine. And that's why we follow the example. So if you used to have a daughter? If I had a daughter, and let's say she is, for example, 12, yeah. and I have a 16-year-old boy who comes and says to me... Or, or, or yeah. a 56-year-old man who Okay, no, no problem. So for example, if I have a 50-year-old man who comes and asks my daughter's hand, I would go to my daughter, I would go to my daughter and ask her, for example, which is, this is a common question, my daughter is not going to want to marry a 50 year old man, that's my daughter, my da and, and again, we, we did have that incident, there was a situation where there was a 50 year old guy who married a 16 year old, again, if we believe, do you believe a 50 year old man can marry a 16 year old, why not, on, on, on what basis is that wrong, like for example, if a 50 year old man came and said he wants to date you or marry you, Okay, why? Okay, I'm just trying to understand. Isn't the legal area legal age 16? Okay, so why? I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just trying to. Okay, on, 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 on what basis? On what basis are you saying that is not normal? 
Yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry. So, 50 year old, yeah. once a day to 16 year old. Mm -hmm. Is there anything wrong with that into the, according to the Western world yes. values? No, there isn't. No, okay. Legally, is it Legally, illegal? it's no. It's Good. Fine. Okay. So but what I'm morally, saying is, do you not think that is wrong? Okay. Then if it's morally wrong, why is the illegal age 16? I don't know. So which means that if they morally saw it wrong, they would not allow it. Yeah. So what I'm saying, what about an 18-year-old and a 50-year-old? Yeah. Is it right, right or wrong? No, wrong. Right. But this is so subjective. What yeah. we're just saying is the following. Nine. And I don't. I don't get how Mary's he can marry someone no, 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 but what we're saying is this, sister, you're looking at, again, you're looking at dynamics today. For you, maybe a 50-year-old, 50-year-old, 53-year-old is an old, grumpy man. But I'm t telling you, <laughs> men back then and how they were, it's not, we're looking at two dynamics, which is today's time and we're comparing it back then. Yeah, but is, should... If you were to put faith in a book, should it not be a book that is but, but, equivalent for all the time? No, 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 no but, it, but it is. We follow that example. Remember I told you, if my daughter's 12 and a 16-year-old boy was to come and ask for a hand... What if I, it was like uh, in the prophet's case where she was six yes. and, and, and no, he was but, but, but we apply the same thing. The fact that he waited three years for her to become an adult, we apply that to today's time and say, my daughter will have to become the age of 16, so that boy will have to wait for her four years. The prophet waited three years, for her to become an adult, he would have to wait four years for her to become an adult. Nine years old is physically like. But, but again, but based on okay, based on what standards? You're looking at the Western world today. You're looking at today. You're looking at a nine-year-old today. We're saying you, the, the the analogy, your example, you have, it doesn't equate to what's going on back then, because the lifespan is totally different. A nine-year-old today and a nine-year-old back then, they were boys going to war at the age of 12, 13. Today you got eight, 24 year olds playing PlayStation at home. You can't, do you get what I'm trying to say? You can't look at a, a, a 16 year old today and back then. So, but if we go to even Christianity, the argument, for example, in the book of Numbers, not even Rebecca, go to the book of Numbers, it tells you that Jesus, the God of the Old Testament, yes, you're right. Don't listen to him, he's full of lies and deceit. Thank you. She has a conversation. He's full of lies and deceit. Thank you. So, what I'm saying is, in a nutshell, it's all right, sister. So, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is, I, didn't, I, was, I, was, I even f f forgot my point. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, so, so, so in, in our natural system, what we're seeing is that it's two different worlds that, that was. And not only that, what we're seeing is not a single... Oh, that was it. In Christianity, in the book of Numbers, Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. He orders men to go and kill women. I mean, kill men, women, and any girl that has not been touched by men who's a virgin, keep them for yourself. So if we're going to reject the Prophet Muhammad based on this premise, then we'll have to reject the God of the Old Testament, the, the Christianity, based on that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? If we were to use the same standards. If we were going to say the Prophet Muhammad cannot be a true prophet because he married Aisha at no, night. I'm not, I'm not yeah, yeah. If we, if we use that, then Christianity, God stipulated taking little girls for yourself. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But believe me, look, sister, the Prophet, I'm, I, look, I'm, trust me, how you feel, I know what you're saying. And I thought yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah, I try to answer. I, before I came to Islam, I had the same concerns. How? But when I looked into it, sister, and I looked into dynamics and who the Prophet was, he married a woman who was 70 years old. Yeah, he, you can still marry a child, but you still have sexual attraction to a young person if you just had him If he did that, then why was his only wife, one of his wife was the only one that Aisha was nine? Why was other wives above, one was old, 70, all of them were widows and divorces? If he had that inclination, why was only one of his wives? And not only that, why did he have to be a wife? He could have just done what he, what he wanted with her, because he could say, I'm a prophet. He didn't. So which shows that his character in question, sister, is not what we think he is. Because we have white middle-aged men who are paedophilia, doing paedophilia, and go to his countries, there is no way we can equate that to the Prophet Muhammad because his character and who he was and his mission that he came with and how truthful he was, we look at that, we look at his life and his marriage with Aisha, there's not a single narration that Aisha says, he coerced me, he forced me, rather she was jealous, she would race with him, she, she would speak about good stuff. So the thing is... But could that not be because obviously she's, she's a young girl and like you can that's be easily the, manipulated? That's, that's true, it could have been. But if that's the case, why did it not ever come out even when he died? She could have said, you know what, all this time I stayed, she stayed a widow. For the rest of her, she died a widow. It's not an impossibility. What we're saying is don't, just all I'm saying is one thing. Don't look at a nine-year-old today and a nine-year-old back then. If you do that, it's problematic. I'll be honest with you, even for me. If I look at a nine-year-old, I have a daughter, seven, and I'm thinking of two years later, it would be problematic, but I know a nine-year-old Aisha is not the nine-year-old today. Believe me, it's not. So, like, when you mean so I'm, I'm, no, no, please, please. When you mean like not a nine-year-old, do you mean like she, she was like she was an adult? No, no, she was an adult. Look, like I said before, you can, you will have twelve-year-olds. 12 year olds yeah, I understand that are that. fully, let me tell you something, they are more developed than certain women. Yeah. So I'm saying the following, 
but is she not under the legal age? No, do, do we not have a? Do you not know that would that would still hurt the, 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 the girl? Like I'm not talking about physically. that. Yeah, yeah. What, what I'm saying is this: if that was the case, the prophet would never marry her at night. The fact that he waited three years means that she was sexually, mentally, and physically ready to be married at the age of nine. At the age of nine. But the, the reason you're saying that is because you're looking at a nine-year-old today. That's what, that's where the issues are. They're not the same. No, it's fine. Sister, you cannot have a look. You cannot have a nine-year-old today and compare them to a nine-year-old fourteen hundred years ago. Do you know what fourteen hundred years means? Fourteen hundred years. How old are you? Sixteen. Sixteen years ago, you was in here. I'm talking fourteen hundred years ago. The, the dynamics are totally different. Totally different. Let me tell you something. That's the reason why not a single person in history ever contested the prophet's prophethood because of this. Not one person in history, Christians, Jews, Hindus, never came with this. You know why? Because that was the absolute norms of society, of marrying, because they were adults. Yeah, no, I get it. It's yeah. just normal back then, but... No, 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 but they were adults. It's not that normal back then. They were adults. You know how you see a 16... Are you at 16? Are you an adult? You are. You're, well, you're a teenager, but yeah. you're an adult. So the thing is this, look. Just as we see you as a 16-year-old adult, that was the norm then. Would anybody come and say, oh my gosh, why has she got a boyfriend? People were like, no, she's at an illegal age. <laughs> the same thing applied then. If it didn't, you would have mass people speaking against it, saying to the Prophet, why are you marrying a child? Not a single narration. But, that, but that's, that's from Absol. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Do you have a Quran? Uh, no. Can I give you one? Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, thank you. It's a guess. But thank you very much, sister. Do you have any other questions? Oh, my God, thank you. Thank you, sir. Can thank I have so Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your questions as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like and hit the notification bell to keep you updated with the latest videos.